Yeah, sometimes I rock my head like, yes, yes, this rocks. Sometimes I go side to side like, no, no, don't stop a rocket. Uh, yes, now, <laughs> welcome to another uh, edition of uh, Zombies to Aliens. I am your host and moderator, Mr. Brightside916, and uh, joining with us today is my good friend, uh, Kirk Ades, also known as Tony, the double D to my Ed, Ed, and Eddie. It sure seems like my music excites you. I don't know if I should continue playing. Uh, uh, you get you get me all hot and bothered. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Uh, next to Tony, we have a uh, Galaxoid, a uh, Megalodon in disguise. Hello. He really, he really is a shark in disguise. See, look at his hair. That is that's his dorsal fin right there. Yeah, and unlike the Discovery Channel special, this uh, Megalodon actually exists. <laughs> <laughs> you guys right, see that? Right. Oh, all, right, all, right. <laughs> all right. Then uh, next to Trey, we have Pablo, also known as Tide de Nubus, my uh, seven days to die companion, but we do it in six days. We die in six <laughs> days. Sometimes sooner. Six is pretty generous. Yeah, yeah. Six if we're uh, always in the crouching stealth position get it done in a couple hours really which is a good position because if you have to go number two you're already squatting yeah yeah i have not figured out that game yet uh then <laughs> we got miss valissa also known as valen the mayor of valtown and don't starve together and it's uh it's quite an impressive <laughs> town i have to say yes it is we have lots of poo <laughs> I'm glad to That's, see that, Colin. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh, there's poo in there, but it's actually practical. You can use it for yeah. uh, lighting campfires. We have limited resources, you know. For farming, sometimes yeah. I just I just shit straight into the campfire. <laughs> it's it efficient, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then it gets rid of your your t poop, so that's good. Mhm. Mm all right, so uh, we like to start out each of our podcasts with a special shout out to new followers. And uh, this is a segment we like to call Follow Me or Follow Us. But, you know, follow me, you know, because that's what the song says. All right. So uh, we lost Tony, but hopefully he will come back. I'll go ahead and send him another invite. This is live. Anything can happen. <laughs> I could die right now. Oh, oh God, hold please on don't. just a second. Miss, uh, the president's with me right now for some reason. He just walked in, so anything really could happen. Mr. President, would you like to say something to Zombies the Alien? Uh, I would like to... <laughs> okay, that was terrible. I'm sorry. That was bad <laughs> All right. Somehow uh, he turned sorry, Mr. Out. President. <laughs> Keep up uh, the good work. Okay, so for our new followers, uh, we actually have a follower on Spreaker, so I want to give them a special shout-out and hope they get some followers as well. This is called Mission Log McDoggle, and they are actually a paranormal uh, Spreaker podcast, and also they discuss uh, aliens, stuff like that. So give them a shout-out. I don't know if they knew. Well, yeah, we're, like, interested in zombies and aliens, but more of uh, fictionalized and pop culture, not so much like... Uh, we it was actually the zombies, made... I swear. Yeah, zombie ate zombie. Tony. They did um... it. I, I was able to <laughs> penetrate my way through their evil. He did. But, I did. Yeah. <laughs> but unlike uh, Mission's uh, log, McDoggle, we don't actually believe in zombies or actually believe in aliens. I don't know. I guess that's up to discussion. Do you guys actually believe in either of the two? Do I believe that uh, dead corpses can come back to life? Of course. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. That's practical. That happens I believe when we're that anything can happen if you just believe in yourself. You can be a zombie. Yes. Ah yes. oh, man. <laughs> Never mind all that tiny stuff. <laughs> nice. And I can also be an alien with that. With that. Yes. You can be a right zombie there. alien if you want to. Sweet. Zombie yes. Aliens. Hmm. Oh, just man. listen to your heart. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? Exactly. Oh, man. Okay. It's so. Horrible. I just wanted to give them a special shout out since they were a new show on Spreaker, and we are uh, kind of a new show on Spreaker as well. Okay, then for our Facebook friends, we have one new Facebook friend. His name is Thomas Palma, so shout out to him. And we also have us three, uh, wait, no, two followers on Tumblr. We have Where Is My Hero, which I don't know where your hero is, but I hope he's somewhere close by. 
And then we got Melting Conscious, whose conscious is slowly melting and not coming towards him. So uh, sorry that your conscious is melting. Hopefully there is a cream or topical <laughs> cream for that. Um, yeah. And so that's our new followers. Uh, so next, we're going to go out to our... Before we get into the discussion of our main topics, we're just going to briefly go around uh, the remote podcast circle, I guess you'd call it, because it's not actually there, uh, and ask our uh, podcasters here, what are they watching and what are they playing? So we'll start off with Mr. Kirk A. Bees. I think I'm going to pass the phone to somebody else. And, uh, uh, he's going gonna to use, wait, hold up. He's going to use a special zombies to aliens pass card. Yes. And he's going to pass it on <laughs> I just pulled that out. Else. So this is, this is a this new is exciting. Up. This is a new edition. <laughs> it's a game show slash podcast. It's, yeah, it's so I'm going to go ahead and just do my freebie right now and use it. Just because I'm not prepared. All right. Would you, like to, would you like to call a friend for that one? Yes, I would. I think I'm going to call on Tyler. All Tyler, right. Have... Okay. Tyler, what have you been watching uh, as of late, sir? Um, Agent Carter, which we're going to talk about yes. later. Yes. Um, Oh gosh, what well, I'm sure there's something else I've been mostly I'm just still watching old things. So uh, last time I talked to you, we were discussing uh, Parks and Rec. Last oh time yeah, well, which I'm again I'm way behind on. So if people are actually watching the show, they'll think I'm a time traveler from the past. Yeah, really. I'm, I'm <laughs> like on... guys, did you see that episode when that thing happened? Wow. <laughs> did you know that guy from Guardians of Galaxies and Parks and Rec? <laughs> But if you don't watch Parks and Rec, you should because it's a uh, nice, uh, very nice show with uh, you know lots of nice characters and good actors and yeah. it's sort of filling my uh, my missing thirty rock void right now. Yeah, it's filling mm -hmm. my missing office needs, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, apparently they're on their last season right now, so oh. I would like to catch up and try to keep current and try to watch the last season as it comes on air. But you know what? Most likely it's just going to go on to Netflix anyway, so I guess I wouldn't have to. Mm. Yeah. That's a good thing nowadays. You know, you, you, if you do miss it, hopefully it'll be on there, you know. Netflix. As as possible. Yeah. yeah. Binge watching television is the new thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you All get right. ice cream and the whole story, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of TV, what have you been watching, Miss Val, as you're eating this ice cream? I wish I had ice cream now. Thanks a lot. Bye. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if I could give you ice cream through the computer, I would. I'll just slather it onto the disc. Oh, we need to get on that. <laughs> How much <laughs> money you would make? But I am watching. Uh, actually, I was the one who started watching Agent Carter, and ah. then Mr. Williams he decided to. Oh, what are you watching? So um, I've been watching that, and uh, Broad City is actually what I've been watching. What is uh, um, Broad City? Two girls from who actually uh, did a lot of improv and whatnot with the uh, Upright Citizens Brigade. Oh God, and yes. And the, they're based in New York, and it's very quirky, and it's I love it. I think it's hilarious. You see a lot of uh, guest stars, uh, um, Amy Sedaris, Amy Poehler, uh, Janine Garofalo, a lot of people that you don't really see you wow. know, as much as you wish to. But, yeah, I've been watching that and uh, Portlandia. Portlandia kind of scares ah, me. Yeah. Broad City is a little bit uh, more identifiable with. So Yeah, I haven't yeah. even uh, started Portlandia. Uh, How is Portlandia? Uh. Fred Armisen is a very strange little man. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> Some of it I can really I I, I understand, you know, because I you know I've got friends all over, and some of them are exactly like that, you know, friends you know who are from there and whatnot, you know, and. At the same time, it's like, what is he talking about, you know? But all, to, yeah. uh, all together, it's pretty awesome. It's very 90s, which I can identify with a lot. Nice. So, you know, it's it's not bad. I mean, it's worth watching, I think. But cool. I really enjoyed Broad City a lot more, and I can't wait to find the next season because I think they just got renewed for another season too, so. Oh, wow. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're a hipster... Uh... Be prepared to um, for a lot of tongue-in-cheek humor uh, in Portland. Yet it really goes after hipsters. Or if you you know ride a fixed gear bu bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, so yeah, Mr. Onesto Stubbs, what have you been watching, sir? Well, uh, Lord of the Rings: The Hobbit edit, which uh, I could expand upon now if you want. 
Yeah, um, go for it. Uh, so, Man, so not so much as Peter Jackson expands. A Reddit user uh, cut all three of the Hobbit movies into uh, one film. It's uh, actually four hours, and uh, supposedly he cut everything that uh, wasn't in the books, like the Tamriel uh, or what, what's uh, Evangeline Lilly's character. Right. Um, no, all right, Tamriel. letter. Yeah. Um. Uh, no. Uh. <laughs> no. Uh. Legolas there in the third movie, and it it comes out okay. Like, but there's a lot of transitions that are weird. He didn't. It's not perfect. It's just like uh, I thought. You know, he would take his time and try to mix and match. Like, uh, you know, overlay like uh, sound files and stuff like that. And it, it it's not perfect. It just kind of like here I cut everything I didn't want out here. You can watch it. Yeah, it's like it's kind of cut and paste. It's as good as he can make it. But at the end there, where uh, Frodo's like, why don't you say good? What? Oh, I'm sorry. Bilbo's like, hey, I'm leaving right now. And he's like, why do you say bye to the dwarves? And there's like. Healy and Feely aren't there. You're like, what happened to them? <laughs> Doesn't show it. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. They don't he, die. he was going up when they were, yeah, they were fighting the pale orc. What happened? I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that uh, isn't in there. So definitely have to watch Battle of the Five Armies of yet to. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, other than that, uh, I also finished uh, the last couple episodes of Selfie Off, which uh, was kind of bittersweet. Um, the most mocked series, but uh, it had great race representation, and uh, John Cho and uh, Karen Gillian were really good in it. So. Oh, nice. Oh, oh um, it's can I, when, when Trey's done, I need to say something I just remembered. So. Okay, Tyler needs to say one more thing. Yeah, you're, you're talking about... You're uh, talking uh, about... <laughs> Never go for it. Use an interruption card. Uh, yeah, interruption. Your, mention of, <laughs> your, in, your mention of race representation reminded me that I am slowly but steadily working my way through Netflix's original series, Marco Polo. Oh, yeah. Which um, I'm going to hesitantly recommend it. Uh, it starts out a little rough, but it's been getting better. And, I don't think uh, anyone's ever done that before. Hesitantly recommended. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, I'm sure someone has, but I mean, because it's watch it, everybody. Don't watch it that fast, you know. There's other things. To do with yeah, your time. there are other things to do with your time, but um, it's kind of cool to see a cast that's not primarily white people. Right. Kind of refreshing, and um, mm-hmm. and I don't know how historically accurate it is. As far there's probably historians pulling their hair out while they're watching it. Yeah, it's probably like um, the Assassin's Creed of yeah, Marco Polo. Yeah, it's just sort of like a sort of like Game of Thrones. Uh, um, love child with a kung fu movie, kind of. Right. It's I, I'm I like it. It's pretty cool. cool. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, that was yeah cool. I never watched that. I wanted to give that a try, so I'll hesitantly watch it. Okay. Is are most yeah. of the actors actually actually Mongolian or? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I think a lot of them are Chinese. Uh, and then and there's you know there's oh, well, enough. yeah <laughs> from the general That's area of the how they do it in Hollywood close enough <laughs> what are you white you're gonna be well, Asian All well right. see it's more accurate than uh, John Wayne playing uh, with John Wayne play Genghis Khan oh yeah yeah good lord <laughs> ah the good old days <laughs> now see here I'm a Mongol you better stop <laughs> right now or else I'm gonna get my hordes to take over. <laughs> ah, sounds just like Angus Khan. That's how yeah. I imagine him. Mm-hmm. All right, so Mr. Tony, would you like to uh, say what you've been watching, or would you like to go on to what have you been playing since you used your pass card? Um, there's a little show. I don't know if I mentioned it before. It's a web show. It's called High Maintenance. I don't know if I've mentioned it. High I don't Maintenance. think you've mentioned that. It's a it's a web show, and it's it's really good. Um, it started a couple years ago, and they're like I think on season five now. Each episode's like between 10 and 15 minutes long, and they all revolve around this pot dealer in New York, but the story doesn't revolve around the dealer, it revolves around the people who buy from him, and it's really interesting because it basically shows you, like, it captures, like, New York, like, everybody, yeah, it's a really good representation of, like, like everybody, and it's and it's really funny, actually, it's a really, really yeah. good show. Kind of reminds me of, uh, have you ever watched Weeds? Reminds me of not. Weeds, what you're not. saying. That is a really good show, and it's on Netflix. I suggest watching it. It's yeah, fantastic. I've heard about it. But I thought this this little web show was neat because it's a nice little format. I've never really been like ingrained with a web series, so it's refreshing. Nice. How long are the episodes each? Whoa! Oh, dear. Megalodon coming at you. <laughs> they're, they're like uh, between 10 to 15 minutes. Some okay. of them are pretty short, like 8. But it's just they pack so much story into such a uh, little bit amount of time that it makes it really worthwhile. And you're watching this on YouTube? Um, it's on, on uh, what is it, Vivo, I think? Ah, uh, Vivo, yeah. Same thing, yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's start us. Uh, so we'll do the. There's zombies a poor emo employee somewhere crying. It's not the <laughs> same thing. It's not the same thing. Why do they keep saying that? <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's use our uh, zombies to aliens patented zombies to aliens random roulette to pick the next person who is going to answer. What are you? What have you been playing? And. Tyler, what have you been playing, sir? Um, I booted up Arma 3 yesterday. Oh, yes. yes. And, um, uh, you know, it, it runs okay. I had to turn off the motion blur. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I, it's just, um, I, I don't, I have no zero experience with the military or military-related things, but it definitely feels a little more authentic than the, you know, kind of standard AAA cinematic shooters. Oh, yeah, yeah. And how they execute everything, and that's kind of cool. I can see how it appeals to the simulationist crowd for its uh, faithfulness. And uh, I got my head shot off very quickly. Yes, as but... did I. <laughs> like, who's shooting at me? <laughs> like, oh, here's the one. Pop, pop, and then you go down. Uh-huh, yeah. So I imagine that's also very accurate. And, uh, and yeah, it's pretty cool. I kind of wish they would just turn me loose and let me explore the huge island. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying that. And then, uh, you know, just been uh, playing TF2 and right. stuff. And yeah. uh, we, we'll have to uh, start a little web series with Galaxoid where Galaxoid teaches me and Tyler various things in Arma 3, including piloting a helicopter and the such, because that just sounds fun. I, 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 I think the... uh, we need Tyler on there to be the good student, and then uh, I'll be on there as the sort of the F student who's going to just crash and everything go wrong. I don't know about that. I managed to get my vehicle stuck on a guardrail in the uh, tutorial <laughs> mission. <laughs> All right. Bad. I had to reload. Okay. So we're both going to be bad. It's just going to be awful. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Mr. Galaxoid, what have you been playing, sir? Well, uh, hopefully not too loud. Um, well, I've been, uh... You are very loud. How about that? That's it. Keep it there. Okay. Anyways, uh, I've been uh, actually, uh, I posted about Grid Autosport. Um, we were talking lag last time when we podcasted uh, what's a good uh, racer for uh, Tony. Yeah. And actually, uh, Grid Autosport would be the one. Uh, it's got split screen on the PC, which is, you know, something that doesn't happen. Just like right, just right off the bat, you can use it, you know, and uh, you can connect multiple devices. It, it's basically uh, that SimCade experience that you get with Forza and Gran Turismo, so it's not a sim, but uh, it's definitely fun. I've, I've used it with multiple uh, pieces of hardware here. You got your uh, wireless speed wheel that worked real great with it off the bat. I got a, oh, wow. a, a sim raceway uh, kind of accelerometer wheel that worked Holy crap. Right what off, right is that? On there. Um, and uh, these ones, these uh, these uh, Xbox ones, they're not available much anywhere, but if you do find one in GameStop, they're uh, 20 bucks. Uh, the sim race wow. one, sim raceway one, you could find for uh, 40 bucks on uh, eBay if if you're inclined. And it works with the H shifter too. So yeah, I've been really impressed. You know, I thought it would be something that was lame. I was just gonna play it on the tablet, and it gets 40 frames per second on the tablet. So wow, that's crazy. that cool. game seems pretty awesome. I'm gonna look into it. You know, I'm noticing here on the wiki page that you said it's for PC, but they have a PS3 and Xbox version. Yeah, it's you get if you got Xbox or PS3, I recommend I'm picking it up. I'm not sure if it's expensive. Uh, this last sale, like uh, the Steam sale gods listened to me and they put it down to 9.99 this week. Oh god, that's nice. So, uh, so actually, for uh, listeners or whoever's listening to this podcast, I will be giving away um, uh, a copy on uh, along with uh, some drag pack DLC on our Tumblr. So uh, wow. I'll put a I'll put a post on there and. Uh, one of you uh, reply, and one of whoever replies, I'll uh, send it off to you. I'll just need your Steam ID or uh, an email address. Nice. Wow, look at that. So uh, I, I assume us podcasters probably can't join that. We are ineligible. Yeah. Uh, no. Are you sort of into the racing simulation, Tony? Yeah, actually, I am. So that's kind of yeah. cool. I'm what gonna... was like? Uh, what was the last like good racing sim you played, Tony? Mm, it's been a while, man. I've been I've been so busy, so I think I would say that the best one. Actually, you know what? I like Rivals. That was pretty fun. Oh yeah, you talked about that last time. Uh, so what have you been playing lately? Or is it more Rivals, or have you been playing something else? Oh man, I've been hooked on um Bomberman. 
Bomberman. Yeah, Bomberman Ultra. <laughs> on, uh, what, is that on, uh, Xbox? It's on a PS3. It's on Xbox as well, but I got it for the PS3. Oh, man, if you like Bomberman, I would say, uh, go with OG Bomberman on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, that uh, one, I was playing uh, that one through my emulator on my PC, but I wanted, yeah. I wanted to try out the wireless, because I was, like, getting, like, stuck to the tethered wire for my PC, but... Oh, uh, okay. It was only 10 bucks on the PS3, and, the, and it's really well, um, upscaled, I think. Uh-huh. It's, like, really, looks pretty nice for HD TVs. Oh, for nice. a movie's game. Sweet. I'm yeah, so, like, in Bob we need to, uh, when we do our 90s cast again, we need to do a whole 90s cast to dedicated to video games. Oh, Even though I think idea. Bomberman might be in the 80s, but but still, that would be great. <laughs> uh, okay, so Bomberman. Uh, so, Miss Val, what have you been playing? Or have you been just trying to survive and don't starve together? I think she got emailed. Actually, I haven't been playing well, much the past couple of weeks because I get migraines. So I actually haven't been playing too much video games, and I miss it so much. Oh, no. Yeah, life. <laughs> Fuck you, life. Life happened. I uh, know. hate it when that happens. <laughs> Who's going to mod modify Skyrim now? <laughs> I don't know, especially since I just saw a trailer for... Um, uh, Beyond Skyrim, Ruma. Oh my gosh, it looks so awesome and so many flashbacks. I'm gonna have to uh, boot up uh, my copy of Oblivion here soon if I ever feel comfortable getting back on the computer. Nice. My poor little head can't take it. Oh no, look away from the screen, Val. Look away. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Play with your eyes closed, I think. Probably, it's ingrained in you. You could probably do it. Yeah, maybe it's just the screen. Maybe, maybe the solution is I to get a couple more screens, you know, and have a big setup, you know, maybe. Yeah, they Ant. do have um, Ant. <laughs> Ant -ant. They do have uh, glasses uh, that reduce the um, the glare on the the computer screen. It's supposed to be better for your eyes and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I think she not aimed too high on uh, the New Year's resolution. You know, she went higher than 1080p. I guess it hurts her eyes. Oh, no. <laughs> too, too high of resolution. Too much. Too Coming good. Yeah. It's like okay. looking directly at God. <laughs> this, much, this is how God must feel like. Um, yeah, for me, uh, just real quick, what I've been watching, what I've been playing, I just recently uh, rented from Redbox, As Above, So Below which is sort of a paranormal activity take on, like, the Paris uh, underground, the catacombs under there, and it's just, uh, it's kind of crazy, because they, uh, in it is a sort of archaeologist, uh, Indiana Jones-type girl, and she finds the, the Philosopher's Stone in the, the catacombs under Paris, which I guess that's where the Philosopher's Stone is. If, in case anyone's wondering where to find it, that's mm -hmm. where you go. Oh, well, I, I met this guy in the hog's head who was looking for one, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Okay. And then uh, I have been playing, uh, I've mentioned several times before, I'm just going to mention it again because it scares the pants off me, is uh, Alien Isolation. And I play it on 360, and even on the 360, it looks fantastic, and it's just the scariest game I have ever played in my life. And most stressful game, too. So, yeah, so that's what we have as a community of podcasters here at Zombie City Aliens. That's what we have been playing and watching. Uh, so now we're going to go into our, our main topics of discussion, which first off, right off the back, we're going to talk about Loot Crate. Da, 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 da. Wait, wait, I got to do the Zelda thing. The so, Loot Crate is a fantastic little fan service where you pay a monthly for a nice box. And it's like a freaking convention comes to your home each time. <laughs> they pack the box full of cool geeky stuff, including these sunglasses, these little 8-bit glasses. This tie that I'm wearing that has Space Invaders on them. I don't know if you see that. Yeah, Space Invaders. And they also uh, had this comic book notepad, which I, I cannot, uh, for the life of me, create a comic. But I'm sure Galaxoid, who also got the Loot Crate subscription, could uh, make a, a comic book in this comic notebook. Did you see it? No? He's shaking his head now. He's shaking his head. I doubt it, though. Maybe Do just it. one of those those flip note like Street Fighter things at the bottom of the post-it. That's all I could make. I can make some stick figures, but... I can, uh, too. I actually made a little uh, Payday 2 stick figure comic for Galaxoid. I should uh, 
scan it and upload it. <laughs> I should give it to our resident webcomic there, uh, Tyler, and see what. Uh, yeah, I should do that. I should. I'll take a picture and send it to Tyler now, so he can uh, hey. improve my artistic abilities, oh, no, which are really that. horrible. <laughs> it's really horrible. Nice. It's like I'm in third grade. <laughs> How many times have you guys came up with an idea for a comic and you're like, okay, I can't draw that. Send it to Tyler. <laughs> I'm sure he's over. He's overworked, but I mean, I'm sure he, he can do it. He has time for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Writing a web comic is hard, but uh, I tell him my yeah. t-shirt ideas too. I'm like, hey Tyler, I got an idea for a t-shirt. It's uh, it's Tigger from Winnie the Pooh, and he's all you know, gangster with a bass backwards baseball cap, and it says, "What's up, Tigger?" <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. So far, I have not seen that created yet. So. <laughs> you know, I get those too. You just get a stroke of genius. You're like, okay, how the hell am I going to make this a thing, you know? Right. I need like a team of artists and stuff Speaking in the back. Which, to just... Animators, game developers. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way I feel sometimes. Them. I have lots of ideas. I just can't implement them. Speaking of which, uh, this is a thing that came in Loot Crate. Is a little retro sort of analog cartridge called Nintendo uh, ISO Analog. Um, so I didn't know what it was, but then you open it, and then this one, this one is the gold one that says Legend of the Future, which is a video game, I guess, of Legend to Zelda cross between Back to the Future, which I would play that. And then you take out even more, and then it's little arms and legs, and I guess it's a little action figure. I wanted to get the, um, apparently there is a, uh, a fire hunt one, which is uh, that one right there, which is a duck hunt slash firefly, so I wanted oh, to get cool. that one, that one looked pretty cool. So the little figures that comes with a little gun, I have no idea exactly what it is or what to do with it, I don't really have anywhere to put it, so I'm just going to keep it in this box, because it looks cool as just a fake sort of game cartridge. Uh, which one did you guys get, Galaxoid? Uh, we got the um, one with the gun. I'm not exactly sure uh, what was on the cartridge itself. I'd have to ask my son. I think they uh, all come like with Like alien something. I don't recall either. But then I saw there was a fifth element one, and I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, well, I'm glad I got the Back to the Future one at least, because it has a little flux capacitor right there. Oh, neat. At least I could really play it. Anyways, and then uh, speaking of aliens, uh, it came, uh, the loot box came with a special edition sort of exclusive loot crate cover for uh, Marvel uh, Star Wars comic book that is just coming out right now. They're just releasing. And uh, there are many variant covers. Did you guys have a different cover with your loot crate? Uh, we got the one with uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca. Yeah, that's I the one I had too. Okay. okay. I, I can't see your video, so I'll have to nod in acknowledgement. <laughs> Alright, sounds good. Just keep doing that for the whole podcast. And then, of course, uh, every Loot Crate, I want to say every Loot Comes shirt. And then, uh, with the with this month's shirt, Voltron. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know if that's coming in. But you can see his face, at least. So, yeah, that was all Loot Crate stuff. Uh, I think, I don't know if I would pay for, uh, like, a year subscription, but uh, I might every now and then buy a month if I think the month was interesting. I know that December last month was a video, like, a gaming month month and uh, this one is uh, the rewind month and I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Is anybody on uh, pricing on the website? How much is it for a year versus a month? I think a month is 20 bucks. I'm not sure about a year. Probably 20 times 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> or less. I don't know. Which by my estimation is a hundred dollars. <laughs> there you go. Carry the one. Yes, okay. It's, yeah. it's not, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, if Loot Crate is Close too pricey for you, there's all kinds of different boxes that they send to uh, your door, basically, with different types of swag. I know I joined, um, I don't even remember what it's called now. Anyway, something, and they gave you, like, a whole bunch of samples of stuff, full-size samples of stuff, which is pretty neat. I know there's Brick Box, which sends you Legos. Cool. Um, yes, there's all kinds of stuff. There's T-shirts, basically anything that you could pretty much think of. There's a subscription box for it, you know, and they deliver it to your door. Even tampons. It's nice. crazy. They send you tampons and chocolate. That's awesome. <laughs> I wish I had that when I started. 
I mean, it's gone, uh, one, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's gone I'm sure way beyond like the Fruit of the Month monthly. Club. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the new Fruit of the Month Club thing. <laughs> so it's pretty neat. Anything geeky, pretty much you can get. Was so. uh, was Brickbox the one where you can rent Legos? I know no, that's a totally that, like, different. And rent story. Legos. Let me see if is it even called Brickbox? No. It's not called brick box. I'm just making stuff up at this point. But it's something like that because they send you like Legos, connects, and other oh wow Lego like uh cool. you know toys to play with you know for a subscription price. Yeah. Nice. All right. <laughs> well, I want to be a member of all those clubs. I'm going to be a member of more. That should be my New Year's resolution: be a member of more monthly subscription things. Brick loot is what it's called. Brick loot. Brick loot. Okay, so similar to loot crate. Yes. Anyways. Okay, so yeah, that's what loot crate had this month. And uh, if we ever get any more boxes, uh, we'll probably report on what loot crate's been doing with those in the new boxes. Uh, but now I want to go into the Marvel sides of things. And uh, firstly, uh, we can just give our impressions of the new trailers that have came out recently since last time we podcast, which is uh, Ant-Man and the new Age of Ultron's 2 teaser. There was a second teaser. And just so we're not spoiling anything, because I know uh, our viewers don't like to be spoiled, and uh, I know particularly Mr. Tony and Mr. Tyler do not like to be spoiled, and particularly uh, Mr. Tyler uh, abstains from all trailers, which I think is ingenious, because trailers really just sort of spoil everything for you. It's almost like you don't have to go see the movie now. Um, so let's give our sort of impressions of the Ant-Man trailer and uh, and Age of Ultron, the new teaser. Uh, let's start off with uh, Mr. Galaxoid. Uh, what are your impressions of these new trailers? Well, uh, first off, uh, who hasn't seen it? Because I don't specifically raise your virtual hand if you have not seen these trailers. Tyler has not seen any Marvel trailers. My hand is down. (laughs) My hand is up. (laughs) All right. All right. Well, uh, as far as Ant Man, we're starting off with. Um, they they released a teaser to the teaser trailer, which is ridiculous now. (laughs) now, You know. Exactly. That's a little too much. The ant size trailer and then they were going to have a human sized uh, trailer the next week so it's it's this is a teaser <laughs> this trailer that released is actually uh, what's called a teaser but uh um yeah uh, it didn't really show much i think and yeah i showed the costume and it it just left me wanting more and it didn't really sell me on the the movie so if you know without yeah. being you know without giving any spoilers it looks like uh Paul Rudd actually would be really good in this, oh, this yes. role. I think he's going to be fine. But in fact, he he's looks also like good in bed. Yeah, sure. Right. <laughs> and a great dancer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he looks he looks fit, and uh, hopefully this goes well for him. But um, yeah, I'm not sold on the movie yet, especially with the troubled right. production notes as they've had. You know, switching jer- directors and whatnot. Yeah, they've been they've been going through a round table of stuff, directors and writers, I think, too. Uh, Mr. Tony, what do you feel about Ant Man? Um, I'm kind of uh, on the same page as Trey, because I think you know it it showed a lot of um, potential, but at the same time, I'm quite I'm I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be expecting. I guess like I don't know what the movie's really the angle or the direction is trying to hit it. Is it supposed to be kind of like a a serious film because there was it seems like it ah, had yeah. films, or is it or is it trying to be you know more like Garden of the Galaxy fun kind of you know just just popcorn film I don't know so I'm in between. Well, I think uh, at any rate, any all of the Marvel films had sort of serious moments in them, yeah. especially like Guardians of the Galaxy. That's there. That's sort of sort of the balance between serious and the funny so, and the action. So I guess so, what I'm saying is I, I don't know where the balance is. Right, right. Because it does, it, for some reason, it does look a little more serious than others, which I don't understand exactly. Because he's he turns in really small. I mean, how serious can he be about that stuff? <laughs> well, that's that's the whole like controversy with the film, no? Like for non-moral fans, which is regular moviegoers, is this gonna work for them, or is this like the 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 limit that they can take superheroes? Right, right. Is this gonna fit into the movie verse? Yeah, for yeah. everybody, for a wide audience, not just comic book fans. Well, and I think I... people said the same thing about Guardians of the Galaxy, and. You know, that was a huge, huge success. So I, I trust Marvel. I think until they start doing, uh, you know, until they release a couple flops in a row, I think that uh, they'll probably be okay. Right. Yeah, that's a good good point. 
Uh, how about you, Miss Val? What do you think of Ant Man? I actually didn't see it yet. I've... Oh, your your virtual hand was up, right? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I forgot. It's okay. You didn't see it. <laughs> but uh, what do you think about just the premise of it? Um. Well, you know me. I don't like to pass judgment before. You know, I'm kind of excited because I don't know if any of you have seen that. Um. Oh gosh, I always forget the name of the show. Tim and Eric, awesome show, good job or whatever. They yeah. have a segment where Paul Rudd walks into a room and he's wearing like this silver suit and he brings up all these like dancing programs on his computer. And I know in at least in the cartoon of uh, Avengers Mightiest Heroes, Ant-Man has a prison, which is basically kind of laid out similar way. So I'm like, oh, it's so fitting. He could have all the villains shrunk down in that little room and dance in the middle. It's awesome. It's perfect. You know, so I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts flowing through my head, so I can't really say anything shadowing. about the Ant Man itself. But I'm excited to see what it, how it goes. I respect Paul Rudd as an actor, so nice. Uh, what do you guys think of the new uh, Age of Ultron trail? Did it give away a little too much? Do you think? Mm, I don't I, think so. I'm, or maybe I just didn't catch it. Uh, I feel like they were showing a little too much between the, uh, I don't know, I don't know if I want to say it, because I don't know if, uh, Tyler's virgin ears can take it. Tyler, earmuffs, earmuffs now. <laughs> okay, I'll, uh, I'll take off my headphones, and then, or I'll, I can just mute them, actually. Alright, I'll, uh, I'll give a thumbs up when you're good. Okay, well, we can't see you, though. Have Trey give a thumbs up. Yeah. You can't see me? No. No. It's just the zombies logo. Oh, I can see me. That's weird. Okay. Okay, muting now. Muting. All right, so I thought it, I thought it uh, gave a little, way, a little too much for um, the Thor, not Thor, the Iron Man and his uh, Hulkbuster suit versus Hulk. I thought it gave away a little too much. They looked like uh, the first teaser sort of just teased that scene just a little bit, and then this trailer sort of expanded on it. I, I just thought they were showing a little too much. Yeah, that's. I think what they got in the trailer is almost the whole fight. So yeah, hopefully, exactly. I'm like now there's no surprise now. Because now or, we can see we can see how the the fight is resolved. Obviously, with the black. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it because it's with it's, a with a certain lady with red hair. Yeah. Which hint, hint, it's not Liv Tyler. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead and give him the the thumbs up. I think that's what. <laughs> Okay. So Tyler is uh, talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, Don Tyler. Tyler. He's here. He's here. <laughs> that Tyler. Screw <laughs> that guy. Anyways. <laughs> but anyone having Anakin Skywalker too there? I don't know. Age of Ultron. Yeah, the really Star Wars <laughs> and Angel. Uh, it's just too much. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Agent Carter. Uh, then yeah, let's get it on to uh, Agent Carter. Well, I think I phrased that a little bad there. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Agent Carter now. Uh, let's start with Miss Val. How how do you feel about Agent Carter, and is it going to be? Uh, you think it's going to surpass Agents of Shield in terms of quality? Um, considering the fact that I soaked up the three episodes that are on Hulu of Agent Carter, like my brain was starving and I could barely get into Agents of Shield, I think it's definitely better. Um. I don't know, maybe that's the feminist in me, you know, I want to see a girl doing kick-ass and doing everything, you know, and going against the man, all of them, you know, but uh, as far as storytelling and everything, I love it, you know. I wasn't a very big um, Avengers, you know, Captain America person before, you know, all this started coming out, but I find myself drawn more and more into the story and just seeing who's who and everything, I'm loving it. Nice. Yeah, I liked how the premiere episode tied really well into the first uh, Captain America movie. They even used clips from uh, the Captain America movie, talked about Agent Carter. I just liked how that really meshed well into the universe. Yeah, I like that better than the way that um, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of did it when they're like, oh, and then Samuel Jackson's going to be here. But I swear to God. Some of those like scenes with Samuel Jackson as Nick Frost or whatever, that wasn't Samuel Jackson. That had to be in a rubber mask. His face just looked way off. Something <laughs> was up, you know. So, oh, Nick Fury, sorry. Nick yes. Isn't that the guy who's from the Nixon? 
the Nixon interview. Nick Fury, yeah. yeah. He, he's just, it looked weird, and then I'm like, it feels like it's trying a little bit too hard, you know, like, oh, we can get this guy to come on our TV show, you know, even though he's a big movie actor, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, I don't know, Agent Carter felt very humble. Yeah, exactly. And it didn't yeah. feel like it had to try to fit into the universe. It just did naturally. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, how about you, Mr. Tyler? How do you feel about Agent Carter and the new Marvel Cineverse? Uh, yeah, I, I really liked it. And I was disappointed when I, I burned through the first two episodes, and then I realized that the third episode that was all there was. So I'm eagerly awaiting next Tuesday for it to continue. Yes. I really, I'm Pro quite a fan. Of, yeah, I'm quite a fan of uh, superhero period pieces. Because I, you know, I don't know, I just, I kind of like that um, yeah, when they, definitely. they, you know, especially when they get to do sort of an alternate history, right. uh, you know, like in the X-Men movies and stuff, and I think that's cool. And uh, yes, yeah, so I like all the nineteen the 1940s aesthetics that they have going on, and, and uh, the Agent Carter character is really great, you know, it's easy to root for, you want to see her succeed. And uh, I'm very interested to see where it's going. Yeah, I like uh, I like that you mentioned that it was sort of a period piece because uh, that freaking with uh, Agents of Shield, it's going on to the future, and that could go pretty much anywhere. But with uh, Agent Carter, they have a a good timeline starting out, which starts with World War II. And of course, because we all saw Winter Soldier, she can't die in any of these uh, life-threatening situations because <laughs> uh, we see. Uh, him, ta- we see Captain America talking to her. Uh, in was she in a hospital in Winter Soldier? I forget. Or was she was just at home in the bed? I think it was like a hospice. Right. It was people like, who were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was close just to death. Home. But she's still alive, so she makes it through. We know she makes it this whole series alive. <laughs> well, <laughs> well I mean, a life-threatening situation just can go out the window. Honestly, I don't think Marvel will kill any major characters, right. at least not for a while yet, because they're too valuable to kill. Well, they could use them. They could kill them. Yeah. All right. Well, Ben Parker. All right. (laughs) They can use them again and again. Different (laughs) versions of Ben Parker. They're clones. Yeah. That's how they started Attack of the Clones. They were originally trying to make copies of all the, like, actors and stuff. Then they had too many. Right. So, yeah. So before I go on to uh, Galaxy, I don't want to ask Mr. Kirk Hades, since someone who hasn't watched uh, Agent of Carter as of yet, uh, just by uh, what we are saying, uh, what are your impressions of Agents of Carter, and how do you think it will fit to the Marvel Cineverse? Agents I... of Carter? <laughs> <laughs> Agents of Carter. There's multiple Agents of Carter. Uh, <laughs> Agent Carter, you... sorry. Is it, um, well, I have one question. Is it available on Hulu Premium, or is it uh, just available for everybody? Both, I believe. Really? Okay. Yeah, I so thought yeah, there's not yeah. that many episodes. It just started, so I think it's still available for those, the basic Hulu package. Well, then I, I think I want to watch it. You guys are really intriguing me. It sounds really great. Um, there's whatever. dresses, there's explosions, there's cars. It's perfect. I wonder <laughs> if... I guess that's too much to get into, but I was just going to mention this. I'm curious to see how far this will take the Marvel TV universe. Like, I wonder if we're going to start using not just secondary characters, but perhaps primary characters as well. Like, maybe the Hulk, give him a TV show. Maybe that's what uh, people can invest. Uh, maybe. Well, to kind of sort of answer that, um... Well, shoot. Okay. Well, I don't know if Galaxy was going to talk about him, but I'm going to talk about him. Uh, one of my favorite characters uh, from Agent Joe Carter is uh, Tony Stark's father, Howard Stark, mm-hmm. and he's in it. And I think uh, he's going to be probably a major part in Age of, uh, uh, Agent Carter. I was going to say Agents of Carter again. Uh <laughs> Yeah, because he was there during the foundation of uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. when S.H.I.E.L.D. came together. Howard Stark was there, so he's going to play a pivotal role in uh, Agent Carter, I think. And that's, I think, I want to say he's a sort of a main character, or he's at least the father to a main Marvel character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think we'll probably be seeing mostly secondary characters in TV shows, just because, you know, they want to save the... Because probably budgetary reasons, but also because they want to save the A-listers like the Hulk, you know, for uh, the movies. That's not saying they might make cameos. Or, oh, I'd be hard oh, yeah. to well, say well, they well, make cameos because it's they in the past. Field, you know, so. Right. I don't know. How do you guys feel about um a certain butler? Yes, Mr. Galaxoid. How do you feel about this butler? Was it the butler who did it? <laughs> It's it's always the butler who did it. Um, uh, yeah, the butler in question uh, is uh, Edwin Jarvis, and just having 
just having that kind of uh, you know continuity through the universe is amazing because that is actually going to tie into uh, Age of Ultron. So that is pretty cool. So after watching Age of Ultron, you could be like, oh, at least that, that's my impression of the general feeling. <laughs> and watch uh, Agent Carter, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, okay, I get it. But you know. Yeah, I, I like the show a great deal. Um, I probably came into the room while Val was watching it, acting like some of those guys in the office that she works with. Hey, uh, you're watching uh, Captain America's broad. All right. <laughs> you know, so. We watched Chad... a chick flick there. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chad Michael Murray is an ass, and he probably, I think eventually that's what's going to come about is he, he is not a war, war hero. He's uh, he's uh, doing stolen valor, I think. Oh, that's my oh, guess. Prediction. So? That's a good guess. Yes. Yeah. I bet it goes somewhere like that. Uh, did, did you guys like? There was one cameo that I uh, I thought I forget the actor's name, but he played Farva in Super Troopers. Yeah, he was the, the first guy in the episode. <laughs> I thought that was pretty awesome. Well, they have a lot of people like um. Uh, also, Ralph the Garvin. The guy with the um with the leg. Uh, he played Victor on Dollhouse, yeah. which is another Joss kind of shout out thing. Um. So I'm wondering if his character is going to get a lot more, you know, to do throughout the series because he was a pretty big character in uh, Dollhouse. So I don't think fans will right. let him just be the guy that sits in the office, you know. So I'm thinking he might be a romantic interest. Yeah, that's kind of what I felt like they were building to. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah, so there's a lot of actors on there. A lot of famous actors. Hey, what were you saying, Galaxy? Sorry. Are we all in agreement that uh, Agent Carter is definitely better than Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I say yes. Yeah. So far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I was psyched about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. just these last three episodes, so now I'm like, oh, why am I watching that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Quite a comparison. Okay, so uh, next I want to talk just very briefly, uh, since we're short on time. I want to talk about X-Men Apocalypse, and then we'll go to Galaxoid's reaction to the CES convention in Las Vegas this year. But uh, for X-Men Apocalypse, I don't know if everyone knew. Uh, I'm just reacting to the news that uh, Brian Singer tweeted out there is going to be uh, new cast members joining the cast. And yes. They're going to be playing a young Cyclops, a young Jean Grey, and a young Storm mm -hmm. in X-Men Apocalypse. And what up? Oh no, did Maybe we lose you? We lost you. Hello? Oh, I lost you for a second there. Hello, I'm here. I, I went to Apocalypse real fast and I came back. <laughs> um, yeah, he had to go check his sources. Yeah, I'm one of the, the you know, the horsemen of Apocalypse. <laughs> uh, I'm the lesser known one. I'm the 13th one, which is just um, tolerance is <laughs> that one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't got a great lethargy. Job. Yeah, lethargy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I gotta check in with Apocalypse like every now and then, but you know I'll get to it eventually. Uh, but anyways, so, so uh, yeah, Sophie Turner is going to be Jean Grey, and she's from Games of Thrones. She plays uh, Sansa Stark on Games of Thrones. So we're gonna get all the Games of Thrones guys coming in on. Yeah, I know. And I think yeah, she's. Uh, from uh, the Cyclops and the Storm, she is actually the more famous of the three -o. Uh So maybe her Jean Grey role is going to be a little more pivotal because they just got a, a huge, big name for it. Um, the next person is Ty Sheridan, who is going to play Cyclops, and he was in the film Mud, opposite of Matthew McConaughey. And then we have um, Alexander Shippa, who is going to play a young Storm. And she was uh, Valentina on Alvin and the Chipmunks, the Squeakwell, the, the Chipette with the glasses. And then she was also on Switched at Birth as Ashley. And I had a, I was wondering if she is going to actually do a sort of uh, African accent, like Halle Berry tried in the first X-Men, or if she <laughs> is just going to... Uh, play it just uh, normally uh, with American accent. It'd be interesting to see uh, what these actors do with the role. I don't know. You bring up a point, you know, about the casting of Storm. I don't know why, but they always cast light-skinned girls as Storm. When Storm, she's like pure African, like right yeah. in the center, as black as you can get, you right. know? 
So I. Really well, I think I think we all why. really we know why that happens. Yeah, we right? know why, yeah. but I wish they wouldn't. You know, the Sony hacks. We all know that Hollywood's pretty much racist. Yeah. 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 <laughs> not, not just you know, not even pretty much. Just like yeah. That. All the way. <laughs> And, you know, it's 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 sad to see, but I'm just hoping that she does a little bit better than Holly did. You know? Yeah. So, no, I liked. Uh... And, I mean, it's not going to be hard. No. Very <laughs> <laughs> very low. Yeah, basically, Holly Berry just showed up. Right. But, um, yeah, we'll see. You know, my favorite uh, X Men so far is the first X Men with uh, Storm, and then the. Uh, Days of Future Past, because Storm was sort of just a supporting role in that. And then the first X-Men, she actually tried to do an accent, and I thought that was at least something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so hopefully... Uh, like kind of just... She's just, just there to draw a crowd. Yeah, like, exactly. Oh, this is a famous X-Men. We have to have her in the movie, even though she's yeah. not really doing anything. Right, exactly. Didn't uh, so, Halle Berry yeah. want a bigger role in... Um... Uh, last or uh, last, last stand? stand? I think it was last stand. Yeah, yeah. that's why uh, yeah. the storm story in last stands there now because uh, she wanted a little bigger role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, uh, yeah. Just show up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you some white contacts. That's all. He's taking over Cyclops. So he liked him in mud, and he's excited for uh, this new person to take on the character. And what I like about it particularly is because it uh, Apocalypse is set in the past. So we're still going to have Marsden and everyone else uh, and Halle Berry coming back uh, if they ever go back into the future. We're going back oh, into I, the future. I'm willing to bet that the movie will be framed as um, uh, Charles Xavier uh, getting Wolverine up to date on the yeah, new future. Exactly. exactly. So there was this guy, Apocalypse. And shit, very much. <laughs> so it's it's like story time with uh, Father X. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Sit Wolverine on his knee and say, "Now oh, let me tell you about the time the world almost ended." <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Galaxoid, you would would you like to discuss your feelings about CES in uh, Las Vegas this year and how you are very, very, very disappointed? Uh, not really. Drones, lame. Next. (laughs) (laughs) As long as we're talking about... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, as long as we're talking about inconsistent accents in movies, in uh, A New Hope, Carrie Fisher tries to do a British accent for a couple scenes, and then by the end of the movie, she just evolved back into her default American accent, and I thought that that guy was kind of bugged me. Anyway. Well, the same with uh, Queen Amidala, right? In Phantom Menace, there's that British accent. (laughs) It, it always starts in the first movie, and then the actor's like, you know what, I'm not going to do this. Don't you think anyway. the director would notice that? <laughs> no. well, continuity, uh, dude. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. We'll sack him. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was just going to say what I found in... Oh. We lost him again. So thing that no. on CES News uh, page is the, the spider dress that was printed with a 3D printer. Everyone's going crazy for those damn 3D printers. Uh, yeah, that's it was pretty much a big letdown. Another letdown is uh, that Club Nintendo is a reward program for uh, people who have Wii U games and 3DS games. Club Nintendo is going to be shutting down as of June 30th. So uh, once you uh, register your first party games of like Mario Kart and stuff like that and get your rewards, those rewards are going to stop uh, June 30th. They're supposed to be um, setting out some a whole bunch of new prizes and stuff next month. Yeah, to sort to, of... Uh, to sort of like, there's the last hurrah, you know? Right, to pay, so if you got pay your the points, fans Get back. them in now while you can, because they're all going away. Even if they say they don't expire till afterwards, they're going to expire on you know, the date he said, so... But I but, thought um, I heard something like uh, after Club Nintendo shuts down, they are going to have another sort of rewards type thing. Yeah. It's just not going to be Club so, Nintendo. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. Because I know there was a very work, big yeah. discrepancy between North America's reward system, Japan's reward system, and Europe, Asia's reward system. A lot of people right. would be like, hey, but they got, you know. They got and, this stuff. <laughs> 
they got actual money. I don't know. As it stands right now, in like Europe, they're still getting pretty good stuff. North America is just getting basically digital downloads. Nice. And that's it. Yeah, uh, stuff yeah. that we probably already have if we're Club Nintendo fans, you know. So right. it's kind of a letdown. So hopefully we'll see something good next month because I know I'm sitting on a 500 points to get nice. something tasty. So. All right. Uh, okay. Does anyone else have anything to talk about? Any no. other topics? How about you, Mr. Kirk 80s? Mm-hmm. That's all I can think of. All right. <laughs> Sounds like we're coming to a close then. So uh, stick around for more Zombies 2 Aliens. Uh, particularly with uh, me and Kirk 80s, we're going to do some more Griffin with 90 Guys podcasts, including uh, I want to do one about uh, video games in the 90s. And I also want to do a, a special Simpsons podcast of the 90s if we can. So that's going to be fun. Any other podcast ideas you, know you would want to do? You know what? Um, to go along with what you said about the Simpsons, why don't we actually you now? I don't know if we should like start handing out homework because that's never fun. But we could give like a suggested like watching list Simpsons episodes maybe. Nice. Because you, you, um, Peter and I think Trey are probably like two Simpsons experts. Right. So maybe yeah, I can, uh, I can more. send that out on the Tumblr. That would be fun, actually. Yeah. I can send out the quintessential 90s Simpsons experience yeah, on Tumblr. because those are actually, you know, when I come home uh, later from work, I can really digest those, and I love them. So you can, like, yeah. that would be awesome, actually. It would be very, very beneficial right. just to me, I think, what sends our fellows. Yeah, okay, I can definitely do that. And then uh, Mr. Galaxoid is going to put up that contest for the free, was it Grid Otter spoke code? You're going to be putting yeah. that on the Tumblr, right? It's going to be on the Tumblr, just uh, either reblog it or just post something on there or like it or something, and you're entered, and it'll be given randomly to somebody. Um, uh, just uh, see your Steam ID and uh, email, and I'll, I'll let you know who won. Nice. All right, then uh, keep it here for Zombies to Aliens. Uh, that's going to be it for us signing off. Remember, here at Zombies to Aliens, we like you for your delicious, delicious brain. Thank you, guys.